It's been brewed and consumed since the beginning of human history. Much more than just a frothy, boozy beverage. For some, it's a way of life, a religion. Join me as we get to the bottom of the blissful world of beer. Bottoms up, it's Beer O'Clock on today's FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of FYI. That's right, we're here in the dog days of summer. The dog days of summer are right smack dab in the middle of the summer. To be smack dab in the middle is, I think, in todo el meollo, as you say in Spanish. So we are smack dab in the middle of the summer, the dog days of summer, and it's hot. I don't know about you guys, but this sweltering heat is killing me. I need to cool off or to cool down, which is refrescar. All right, well, today we're going to look at beer if you haven't figured it out yet. If you haven't opened a beer, do so now. Go ahead. I'll wait two seconds. Okay, good. Have you got your beer? Crack it open. You can say open your beer or crack it open. Crack a beer. Eso es muy nativo. Crack a beer and enjoy this episode of FYI. And remember, guys, if you want access to bonus content, all you have to do is join me on Patreon. Become a subscriber, and for as little as three euros a month, you can get bonus audio, access to special offers, and much, much more. If you want more information, check it out. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso and While we're at it, ya que estamos, I'd like to send a shout out to my patrons. My super duper students, Deside, Susie, Isabel, Alex, Boris, and Loles. And I can't forget about my interstellar students, Carmen, Aina, Diana, and Pilar. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And you guys should too, because thanks to them, we can keep this podcast going. As many of you know, this is a self-produced podcast, so I don't do it for any money. So if you'd like to help me and contribute and support the work I do, you can do that for as little as three euros a month on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso, and there are tons of benefits. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them. Well, let's get into this episode because I don't know about you, but I love beer. I am a beer lover. Oh, man. I lo- Just the word beer just makes my ears perk up as we say. So let's look at the intro. I always like to put a lot of vocab in the intro so we can learn from that too. I said it's been brewed and consumed. Now to brew is elaborar. Somebody who brews beer is a brewer. The place is a brewery. So another way that we call beers is brews or brewskis, jugando con esta palabra. Do you want to have some brewskis? Do you want to have a couple brews? Those are synonyms for, do you want to have some beers? So we play with that word. Beer is brewed in a brewery by brewers. And it's been consumed since the beginning of human history. It's much more than just a frothy, boozy beverage. All right, so the word froth. Froth is espuma in Spanish. Now, we also say the word foam. But when we talk about beer, a lot of times we say froth with the adjective being frothy. Then the word booze. Booze is another way to say alcohol. So boozy means an alcoholic beverage. And obviously the word beverage is a drink, a beverage. I want to teach you guys a little trick while we're on it. Words that end in A-G-E are usually not pronounced age. So we don't say beverage or average. It's average or beverage. A good way to remember it is this word rhymes with the word bridge. So there's an average beverage under the bridge. Never age. It's only age when it's edad. As a suffix, it's always idge. Idge. Again, it rhymes with the word bridge. Then I said, for some, it's a way of life. 
a religion. And I was talking about myself there. I have to say that was a confession. Beer is my religion. I'm not a religious guy, but I love my beer. Oh, man. Then I made a little joke here, because when you finish a beer, you get to the bottom of the glass. El fondo del vaso. But also, to get to the bottom of something is to find out what's going on. To get to the bottom of it. So I don't know what happened, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. It sounds like something that a detective would say. Then I said... We'll get to the bottom of the blissful world of beer. Bliss is absolute happiness. When we talk about the word bliss, we're talking about complete and total happiness. So the word blissful would obviously be the adjective, which is feliz, or in este caso, maravilloso, I think would be the perfect translation. The blissful world of beer. And then I said, bottoms up. Now, bottoms up is another way to say chin-chin, I think you say in Spanish. Or al centro, pa' dentro, right? You have a, a couple different things you say when you make a toast. Remember, to make a toast, hacer un brindis. To make toast, hacer una tostada. One word makes all the difference there. So when you're making a toast, a lot of times we say in English, bottoms up. And this literally means la parte de abajo hacia arriba. Bottoms up. They're talking about the glass here, no? En el vaso. Salud. Hasta el fondo. Bottoms up. It's another way of saying cheers. So see, I played with that word bottom over there. And then I said, it's beer o'clock. I love this one. Beer o'clock. Es la hora de la cerveza. It is definitely beer o'clock on today's FYI. So beer, as we said, is as old as human history. In fact, beer brewing and drinking predates, that means it came before, it predates written language. So before we could write about the beer we were drinking or the recipes, las recetas, we were drinking it. We didn't need to explain it. That's incredible. We were drinking beer before we could write. Wow, our priorities are pretty clear. Now, the earliest evidence of beer making was found in western Iran and Iraq. And this, for many, they say, is the cradle of civilization, the cradle. You use that word as well in Spanish, the cradle. A cradle is something that a baby sleeps in. You say cuna, but it also has this secondary meaning of cuna as well, la cuna de la civilización, the cradle. Great word. And that dates back, are you ready for this? To 3,500 B.C., 3,500 years before Christ, people were drinking beer. At least that's where the evidence dates back to. But it wasn't just fun and games. They took it seriously. Oh, yeah. They meant business. To mean business is que van en serio. I mean business. Voy en serio. And I'm talking about the people in ancient Mesopotamia. Careful with this one, too. I've heard a lot of students say ancient. It's not ancient. It's ancient. In ancient Mesopotamia, beer was associated with religion. So see, I wasn't the first one to associate it with a religion. They've been doing that since the days of Mesopotamia. It was even ritualistic. They believed that beer had magical powers. Yeah, beer has magical powers. Who would have thunk it? ¿Quién lo hubiera dicho? Now, have you guys ever heard of the Code of Hammurabi? Well, the Code of Hammurabi was an ancient code in Mesopotamia that decreed that bartenders, bartenders are the people who serve drinks. You say camarero de bar, we say a bartender. Bartenders who watered down beer, to water down is aguar. Bartenders who watered down beer would be, are you ready for this? I, I think I need a drum roll here. executed. Yeah, you could be killed for watering down your beer. Oh, I think it's a good punishment. Who wants watered down beer? Even the great pyramids have a beer link. Un vinculo con la cerveza. The builders, cuidado con esta palabra. Mucha gente dice build, right? Or builder. It's build. 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 P pretend that that you is not in the word. Maybe that you is throwing you off. Te desconcierta. It throws you off. So the builders of the great pyramids of Giza, los pirámides, the pyramids of Giza, were paid. Do you know how they were paid? 
with a daily ration of beer. Are you serious? That's why those pyramids are so beautiful and so big. Those guys just kept their eye on the prize. Seguían mirando el premio adelante. They say, oh man, one more hour and I'm going to get my ration of beer. I know I'm dying out here in this hot desert, but I'm dying for a beer. Y eso es la estructura, muero por una cerveza. I am dying for a beer. Have you guys ever worked for beer? I, I think I have. Not directly, I would say, but I think when I was my whole 20s, <laughs> when I was in my 20s, uh, I didn't save money. I just had my beer money. You know, any money, any extra money, any spare money or spare change I had laying around, tirado por ahí, I spent on beer. So I've indirectly worked for beer as well. <laughs> Anytime you help a friend move, isn't that what you do? Your friend says, if you help me move, trasladar de casa, I'll buy some pizza and some beer. So I think all of us can say, like the great builders of the pyramids of Giza, we've all worked for beer. It's incredible. Now, when I think about beer, too, I think about monks. Because monks have always been linked with beer. Monks are monjes. Una monja is a nun, and un monje is a monk. And, well, monks in different monasteries in medieval Europe would, they would do these things called beer fasts. A fast is estar en ayuna, to fast, right? De hecho, la palabra breakfast es muy parecido a la palabra desayunar. To break the fast, desayunar. So if you're fasting, it means you're not eating anything. So what is a beer fast? Well, during the 40 days of Lent, Quaresma, I think you say Lent, they ate no food. They would get all their calories from beer, and they called it liquid bread. I thought this was something new, this liquid bread thing. So yeah, can you believe that? These monks, I love it. They, I mean, they had it figured out. Lo tenían clarísimo. They said, oh, no, no, we're not going to eat. Forget about that. We're not going to put anything into our body except beer. Hey, where do I sign up? I want to be a monk, if that's what a monk's life is like. I don't mind the isolation. Just give me beer. And monks have been famous for brewing beer all throughout their history. Some of the oldest beer recipes in Europe come from these monks. The oldest continuously operating brewery. Remember, we looked at this word brewery. It's where a Beer is brewed or made. The oldest continuously operating brewery in the world. Do you know where it's going to be? I think you could you could have probably guessed this on your own. A lo mejor lo podrías haber adivinado. Bavaria, Germany. The, excuse my pronunciation, the Weihenstephan Abbey in Bavaria, Germany is the oldest continuously operating brewery. So there are other ones that were older that maybe have closed down, but this one takes the cake. Se lleva la palma. Nosotros decimos, se lleva la tarta. It takes the cake. And these Benedictine monks, uh, they started brewing beer around uh, 1040 AD. 1040 AD, después de Cristo. Maybe I missed my calling. I shouldn't have become a teacher. I think I, I would have loved being a monk, especially with those beer fasts. Hmm. Now, my country, the United States, is a huge beer consumer. We love our beer. And, well, we are known for our watered-down beers, our, our Budweiser's, our Coors, which I think are pretty watered-down. I call it water-flavored beer. But remember, in the United States, we have so many different micro-brews. Micro-brews son eh, las cervezas más pequeñas, menos conocidas, micro-brews, and craft beer, craft beer elaborado. So we have a lot of variety uh, as far as beer is concerned. So... We consume a lot of it. But the beer capital of the world, or at least at one time, the beer capital of the world, maybe it was self-proclaimed, I'm not too sure, was Milwaukee. That's right, Milwaukee, Wisconsin was the beer capital of the world. The four largest American breweries were located there. Miller, Pabst, Schlitz, and Blatz, which uh, some of those are still around. I don't know if Blatz 
is still around, but Miller is a classic in the United States. Pabst Blue Ribbon. It's if you guess if you ever get a chance, try it. I always order a Pabst Blue Ribbon uh, because my grandfather used to drink that. So and Schlitz. These were like the cheap beers, you know, but they were good, you know. They were based on these German recipes. They made Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the beer capital of the world for some time. And if you know anything about baseball, then you'll know that Milwaukee's baseball team is the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, really? Los elaboradores, los cerveceros. That's right. Aha! So now it makes sense. Another place that's well known in the United States for brewing beer is a place called St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where Anheuser-Busch is located. That's the ones who did uh, Budweiser, which I think is probably the most famous American beer. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm saying it's the most famous one. So St. Louis has always had a beer tradition as well. Speaking of, our friend Walt Disney wanted to open his park in St. Louis, Missouri. He was looking at St. Louis, Missouri because he was from that area. So when he sat down with the city council, the city council is like the city government, the boss of Anheuser-Busch said, okay, great. Well, these parks are going to be great that you're going to open up and you're going to serve Budweiser. You're going to serve our beer. And Walt Disney said, no, 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 no. It's a family park. I'm not going to serve beer. And, well, since Anheuser-Busch and their company had so much pull, Didon, we say the same thing, in St. Louis, well, it was kind of an ultimatum. You serve our beer or you don't open here. And, well, Walt Disney, being a pretty demanding guy, exigente, pretty stubborn, right? Stubborn is hard-headed, right? Que no le vas a convencer. He is hard-headed. Cabezota, I think you say in Spanish. He said, okay. Well, I'm not going to open here then. I'm going to take it to another place. And that's how Disney ended up in Orlando, Florida. But it was originally going to be in St. Louis. So beer won over family entertainment. And now the irony of it is Disney serves beer and alcoholic drinks or alcoholic beverages, para usar esa palabra de antes, at all their parks, except the Magic Kingdom. So Walt Disney has stayed true to his principles and his company throughout the years because you still can't buy alcoholic beverages at the Magic Kingdom. Now, no problem. Just go over to the Animal Kingdom and you're fine. (laughs) People are animals over there. Interesting story. A lot of times we talk about, well, some of the negative side effects of drinking beer. You get that beer belly. Esa tripa cervecera. Obviously, drinking a lot of alcohol is not good for your liver. Tu hígado. Beer can also make you a bit gassy and can make you burp. Eructar. I love that word. It sounds like what it is. Burp. Well, there's got to be something positive about beer. Well, it's got some vitamins. That's a good thing. Hey, there's a plus. But also, there are some health benefits. Uh, They say that beer can promote healthy skin and hair. If you ever want to experiment with this, you can go over to a beer pool. That's right. There's a beer pool at the Schloss Starkenberger Brewery. This is in Tarrance, Austria. And you can literally take a swim in a pool full of beer. I think I know where I'm going for my next vacation. Tarrants, Austria, here I come. Well, folks, we are nearing the end of today's show, but I wanted to remind you, if you want to learn more, if you want PDFs, if you want review classes with us, you can get that and much, much more by joining me on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. In the bonus part of the show today, we're going to look at the strongest beer in the world. We're also going to look at some really cool idioms in the English language that come from beer. And a class looking at all the different kinds of beer out there and other vocabulary around this fascinating topic. I hope you guys join me in the bonus part of today's F-Y-I. 